I don't know why I have to introduce him, given the reception that you guys gave him. But uh, when our esteemed president, I will do away with uh, greeting the very important people on uh, days because I know you are all eager, as I am, to listen to our distinguished commencement speaker. When our esteemed president asked me to introduce our commencement speaker, my first reaction was, wow, suerte ko naman. You see, this is not the first time I'm introducing our commencement speaker. As you may recall, last year I also introduced him during the 64th foundation anniversary of our school. And so I will not go through his bio data at this time as customary. But the fact is, the whole country knows him already. And perhaps more importantly, what he stands for. But there is one fact that I would like to mention. He is a distinguished and outstanding alumnus of our beloved university. And so, ladies and gentlemen, and especially to our VIPs today, the graduates, His Excellency, oops, His Honor, <laughs> Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Kindly sit down. May I pay my respects to uh, Attorney Roberto Laurel, President, Dr. Peter Laurel, uh, Simam Sali, Attorney Mark Laurel, Dr. Conrad Iniego, and Paolo. How are you? I'll take care of you in Davao. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I'm late. Uh, I went to, I'm always late, actually, nowadays. I went to Novaliches to arrange a rally there with the leaders, uh, the Moro people here. And uh, I thought that it would take me a lifetime to reach uh, this place, so I raged for help at uh, the chapter in one of the buildings. Uh, the chapter landed, and I said, I don't want to go to the and I told him, papatayin talaga ako ng mga laurel, ba't pag hindi ako dumating dito? <laughs> well, uh, I am your schoolmate. Uh, early on, I had the choice of uh, La Salle, Ateneo, and uh, all the other schools, but I choose to enroll in the Lyceum. You know why? Uh, hinahabol ko yung mga the, the, the plus point of our uh, generation. Nandoon kasi yung mga Lava Brothers, nandoon yung season, and teaching also was uh, si David Lapos. I guess I was really out for something. You know, I became a radical because I come from Lyceum. <laughs> Uh, would you believe it? The subject that Maria Sison was, te was teaching us was political thought. And that's why he contaminated us early on. And we became the first Kabataang Makabayan. You know, until now, if I make it, God willing, to the presidency, I will be the first left president in this country. 
And that's the reason why I raise my fist, because I am a member of Bayan. Bayan has always been my political party, but I am not a member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. I do not agree. They're too far left. I do not agree with the armed struggle and the killing of Filipinos. Magpatayan lang tayo kanya-kanyang ating bayan. But I am really a socialist. One, because uh, I, we have experienced hardship in our lives. In 1948, my father decided to migrate to Mindanao in Davao City, and it was still a frontier land. It was a long, unwinding road of sacrifice. I remember vividly, in 1954, my father built a house in a wetland, just at the back of the Ateneo de Davao. And you know what? Even at that time, no one would ever think that the wetlands were already in the hands or the title named after so many owners. But most of them were from Luzon, particularly in Manila. And it is not their fault, actually, for the simple reason that, you know, at that time, the Bureau of Lands and whoever was taking care of the Department of Mindanao, that was the governing entity known. And wala namang communications. Probably there was really a dirt of information coming in from the Manila government. And so most of the lands were given to Edith. Pare, merong, we are opening up Mindanao for uh, the taking. Baka gusto mo. So almost all, taga rito. Hindi naman pumunta sa Visayas. And even the mails took them about a week to reach our place. So, not their fault, but that is how it was. And I grew up with a paradigm very limited sa aking environment. I grew up in a squatter's area. Hindi naman sa lahat ng panahon. We improve our lot as the years went by. But ako, naranasan ko talaga yung kahirapan. So that is why naglaki ako ng ganun ang paningin ko. I could not have developed a mindset different from what I have now because sa formative years ko, doon ako si squatters. And I learned the gutter language. And the idioms that I use are really reflective of... Uh, uh, just an improvement of what I learned sa aming neighborhood. That is why uh, I can talk in pagka mag sulti ko sa hilunggo. Ara, hilunggong re? Damo sa hilunggo ah. We, lumaki kasi kami mixed. Davao City does not belong to any particular tribe. It is not the Visayans, it is not the Tagalogs, but the mix. And that is why this new generation, sumunod namin, they talk in and out Visayan Tagalog. If you are not a Davawenya or Davawenyo, you'd never understand the new generation. Alam nila mag-connect-connect ng... No, they, they can say Tagalog in the first few lines, but continue with Visayan. Mawawala ka. And that is the evolving dialect there in the southern part of our country. Mix kami, and we can talk in the gambal ko sa ilo-ilo, daw bilib sila sa ako na. Di Duterte na eh. Di Puga na. Ilunggo mo kanya na eh. So you can see the crowd, especially those uh, taken from a drum. Spectacular. Very spectacular. Pero if I can convert yung mga sinasabi na sa akin, that is another story. That is another story because, you know, voting time uh, is a, a very imponderable thing and anything can happen there. Vote buying, intimidation and all. I, ako, wala akong partido, but I choose PDP. 
because PDP is actually left-leaning. As a matter of fact, the PDP guys take their oath of office with the left hand and shake with the left hand. Ganon ang ano ni Pimentel. Pimentel is a, parang ganon rin, but not so. Kami yung sumunod mga radical. But you know, I have been uh, mayor of Davao City for the last 23 years. I started with Bayan. And I did well. For the reason that I was elected, I said, in 1988, and it's now 2016, and I'm still the mayor of Davao City. Eh, wala ka man nakita. Ang pagka-socialista ko dito lang yan. Left, left of center or something. But I'm not really a hardcore uh, anti-government. But I am a staunch critic of government. The abuses of government and the ineptness of government and a government does not really care for the people. Alam mo, I take the posture of a radical. Sinasadya ko talaga yung bunga. I'm testing the elite. Because in this country, if you would notice, historically, there are about only a few guys, the billionaires here in Manila, the Imperial Manila, to choose the president for us. Pag sinabi ng mga politiko, dito tayo, ha? Opo, congressman. O dito tayo. Opo, dito tayo ngayon. Yes, sir. Bahala ka, sir. Why? Because we are fundamentally a feudal country. Kaya mainit. Why is it that, that there's so much killing during political exercises? Why do you think people kill the guys on the other side? Kasi nakatutok yung pag-asa nila sa buhay. Trabaho, it's only the, large, the largest employer of government is yung congressman, governor, mayors. Trabaho, pagkain. Then the roads, then the water. Then lahat. Kaya sila nakatutok sa barangay captain at mayor at governor. For all of their needs actually. The poor, which constitute about 85% of this country, are really dependent on government people. Ito namang, as a gobyerno, they have to steal. They have to make money to sustain their partisan group in a society. Kaya ganun kung bakit magtanong, bakit ba dito? Sa Pilipinas, patayan. In, in uh, other nations, some vote, some don't, and no big deal. That is the reason why. Because we have kept our country in eternal poverty. Eh, kasi, namimili, and those elected really take care of the elite. Maliliban lang yan. And this elite, you know, they, they, they want uh, to chart the history of our country in their eyes, in their mind. Eh, yung iba naman pumapalag. No, I'm testing really the water sa radicalism. As if I am irreverent, but it's not really true. I, I pray to God always. Baka patayin ako itong dalawang to, mga gago. Uh, for safety and <laughs> Sinasadya ko yan, lalo na yung inanala. Because in this country, yung mga probinsyano, hindi ko naman, I'm not trying to equate myself with you or identify myself with you, but they want, they want it prim and proper. They control the media, they control uh, television and all. And they want to do governance in accordance with their interest. That's how it is. Noon pa ganun talaga ang... Ngayon, bakit ako tumakbo? I was ready to retire. And I gave you three reasons. And I said, I have a very serious in the family. Second is that uh, I'm old. Third, I do not have the money. Kaya nung October 16, I was not there to file a certificate of candidacy. I never show up in Manila. So, I said, look, guys, I've been telling you, 
ayaw ko maging presidente. Eh, bakit po? Ako karaming, no, Manila guys, mamili ka by the thousands. Why are you insisting on me? Eh, yung iba mga taga Manila. But for those, uh, well, of course, the well-to-do in Davao, sabi nila na, you know, pagkayon ang line-up of the national horizon, we are in trouble. Sabi ko, ayaw ko. It was only in yung 10 of, uh, was it uh, November? Sa substitution, on December, sa substitution. Na sinadya talaga nila dito to reserve yung si Captain Dino, Kapitan. Na mag-reserve talaga na siya. Because they thought that they could, by that time, really, not really force, but convince me to run. Now, in the meantime that I was waiting for the parties to announce and the candidates, we were already talking about the problems of our country. And for the life of me, wala akong narinig na tao nagsasalita about Mindanao, the most critical issue sa ating bayan. Else, we might end up with a new reconfiguration of the flag. And tell me why. And if you listen very carefully, you'd understand. In 1521, the first colonizers, the imperialists, landed in Leyte. Went down Magellan, planted the flag of the uh, Kingdom of Spain, and proclaimed, I would call all these islands in the name of the King of Spain. So it will be known as the Philippines to honor King Philip. And tapos sabi niya, I will now bring into this island the faith of Christianity. Well, I do not have any quarrel with religions. For after all, it moves down to our values in life. Ang problema, when he went around, he was using gunpowder, which for the first time was very alien to the natives, yung mga tatay natin. And so when they first heard of the explosions, talagang everybody was shaking because this guy who is white has a weapon that can really kill us from a distance. And even the muskets, the rifle of the times. Pakapatay ka ng tao na malaya. So the natives were really no match. Yung mga lolo natin, and one day, they found ourselves, our fathers, looking, may mga puti, nag announce na kanila ito, and we have to pay our due and respect to the kingdom of Spain. And they sat there for 400 years. And they, you know, they enjoyed the fat of the land. And there was this war between the Spaniards and the Americans. And Admiral Dewey, in whose name, Dewey Bolivar's name, smashed the Spanish Armada in Manila Bay. And so by the Treaty of Paris ending that war, the Philippines was ceded to the Americans as if we were chattels, the population. Masakit yan. So we had the Americans. And again, they took advantage of the land. 50 years. Enjoyed again the fat of the land. The best mahogany. Lahat na. Don't ever think that when the Filipinos came into lag in this country, all the beautiful woods now, wala na. It's almost extinct. Tindalo, Giho. Those were na hindi makain ng anay. Believe me. Those are really hard as hard. Uh, if at all, I don't know if you still can count them by the number of your fingers, the trees uh, still standing in our forest. So, yan ang ano ko. We were <coughs> colonized, and the Spaniards and the Americans created the troubles of our country. It was because of imperialism. Because they went as far as Mindanao to look for new territories 
Mindanao was not really a part of the origin, original lands taken by the Spaniards. Kasi if at all, a few Muslims here, uh, Moro and some, our forefathers never had that religion that prays to God before, you know, sometimes we do it in front of a cross. Ay, ang ating mga minuno, wala man silang, wala man silang santo. Santo Paulo, St. James, Santo Rodrigo, wala yun. So little by little, they learn about Christianity. I don't have nothing against the religion. Religion is also values. Sometimes we forget. Ang problema nito is, uh, just like the Middle East, which was uh, carved out from the chart of the Americans, the British, and the French. Look at what happened to colonialism. They're paying for it. War, they brought it to their lands. They are not being invaded. Sila mismo created the problem. Uh, in the spirit of libertarian and humanity, sige, pasok, pasok, pasok kayo. Not knowing na yung pumapasok yan, also know their history and how they were colonized at ang oil nila for so many centuries were controlled by the Western powers and even the pricing. So Britain got rich industrialization, American role, and uh, the countries in the Middle East divided. Puro Arab yan eh. Pinakialaman nila, ayun, ganun. No, there's the dust or ISIS, sinusunog sila lahat doon. Those are the sad reality. Kaya ako talagang nagpahan ako. I am not that, hindi ako ganun kabastos. Pero sinasadya ako yan because, you know, whatever mabayaran sila, especially the writers, and there are a lot of them, they would really slant. And every statement that I make, they would always slant it. Sinasadya ako tuloy. Talagang minumura ako sila. And even the United States, nag-comment doon dito, you know, you know guys, you are practicing how not to be a successful diplomat. For you as a foreign service, I, 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 I was under uh, uh, English also, international law. You know, it would be best just to keep your mouth shut. Like today, they add a comment to a very innocent narration of what actually happened in Davao. But they can twist it at ito namang mga cash, cash, class crusaders, kasi binayaran, pile ng kaso, pile doon. Kaya ako nagalit. Kaya itong human rights naman, sabi ko, gunggong pala kayo. Eh, gunggong naman talaga eh. You know, I am a Filipino before anything else. I have that fundamental right to say what I want to say. Pagka sinabi kong ganun, at I was just narrating what happened, they took it to me that I was joking. I was not joking. Alam mo kasi, politika ngayon. There's an affidavit circulating about a Moro lady na hinulog ko sa helicopter. Daw. Wala man akong hinulog na helicopter na Moro woman. Si Bing Paul siguro, tinutula kita, but why should I throw you out of the helicopter? May nahulog, tatlo, pero they decided, they decided to jump with the parasote, let them. Wala mo, pag gusto mong tumalon, tumalon ka. Ayan, totoo. Pero walang, I never really pushed out a lady there. I mean, you know how politics is. They, they you know, the establishment. Yung, basta yung gusto ka nila, gusto ka pag ayaw ka, and if you are not a member of the ruling elite, stay out. Well, that is why sabi ko, ah, gusto ninyo. Oh, they will hear. But if I become president, I'd be prim and proper. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, I am uh, Rodrigo Duterte, your president, and uh, I'd like everybody to uh, stop hissing, and uh, I want quiet and uh, silence as I talk here before the Filipino people. No, I don't know if I can say it. No, no.
what gets my goat? Yung abuso ng gobyerno. Ay, yun ang sabi ko, mauna kayo. If you are into drugs, into crime, mauna talaga kayo. Ah, kung may tagadabaw dito, alam nila yan. Basta pumasok ka nandito, three policemen. Sabi ko, huwag kayong maglaro niyan. And he died. Meron doon ang polis na kidnap, and he died. Ay, sabi ko, huwag nito, because sirap na nga tayo eh. I have more than enough problems to solve for this city. And it was a no man's land noon. We don't want to go down about seven serado na, and I was a prosecutor, but my job was very limited to, I was doing trial work for the government. Well, wala akong magawa, except from a distance, advising the police and the military from time to time. Yun. Now, itong problema na ito sa Mindanao, Corey Aquino tried to solve it with Nur Miswari. And so there was this agreement known as the Tripoli Agreement, kayong mga foreign service. It's known as a Tripoli Agreement that was supposed to take care of the problem. Ang problema, you know, pagka may nila talaga, problem, wala talaga mo yari. Hindi na alam na historically, ang mga Maranao and some of the Maguindanao Moro tribes, Sunni. Ang yung iba, Shiite. Hulo is Shiite. Before we came, as a matter of fact, hindi pa tayo, we're, we're still part of the atomic particle, particles you know, of planet Earth. May away na yan siya, just like what's happening in the Middle East. Sunni and Shiite. Nag-aaway yan. So when they foisted Miswari to be the top honcho of Mindanao, you would notice, little by little, the Maguindanao, Maranao, Black, slowly peeled off and formed their own MILF, as Miswari's MNLF. Ganon. Kasi either dyan sa daw, ayaw magpaandar yan. And left alone, Magpataya niyan. Maniwala ka. They'd rather have a Christian leader where they can work with comfortably. Yan ang sekreto dyan. Not now. Not now. But you know, over the years we had SPCPD, ARM, and all sorts of uh, agreement. Eh, ano nangyari? Gulo. Because ang mga moro wants to have Mindanao for their own, and rightly so, because they, they, I said they, they belong to a sultanate differently from the rest of the Visayas and Mindanao, and were already Islam. Yan ang problema. So, this administration uh, had this BBL, and the president, I mean, it's not really his fault, Convince the Maguindanawans, M.I. Kimurad, that they will have it before the elections. That's what happened. They dribbled lang nila. They dribbled it. And it's now election time. We are nearing the end game. And there is no BBL. And you must remember that Murad said, if you do not give me the BBL, I will go to war. And the president also replied, I don't know, but I would not rather have a list And he said, if you do not give to Mura the BBL, you might as well start to count body bags. And Dele said, there will be violence in Mindanao. Eh ako, taga Mindanao. And if there is war, it will be Mindanao ang battlefront. Doon kami magpatayan for a document which we never had any participation at all. Kaya pinuntahan ko si Japar, si Murad wala, on this Central Committee of the MILF. 
Sinabi ko sa kanya, do not start to spin a violence here which you cannot stop on time. Eh sabi ko, eh kung ako ang mapresidente, per chance, either patayin mo ako o patayin kita. Because I have to swear to the Filipino flag that I would keep the, the integrity of this republic as one and that I have to provide, including the Moro people who do not want it, protection for everybody. That is the duty of a president. Sabi, you know, my mother is a half Maranao, half Chinese. Ang lolo ko, Chinese, from Siamen. Many years ago, may asawa siya doon. Pumunta dito yung buang nag-asawa ulit, yung lola ko. <laughs> now, yung anak ko, yung vice mayor, also, also, being, also being vilified now, nag-smuggling daw, is really the vice mayor of Davao. He married a Moro lady, a Maranao mother and a Tausog father. So I have a line in my family na puro Moro. Kasi sabi ko, what do you want me to do? Shoot the Moro or shoot the Christian? So if there's anybody most interested to have peace in Mindanao, ako. Torn between two lovers, ako. I love the Moro because my, my lola is in Maranao. Now, tinatanong niya ako, anong tribo ni Duterte? Bakit masama ang bunga niyan? <laughs> well, uh, we trace our pedigree sa papa. So my father uh, came from Cebu. So kung magtanong kayo, anong tribo mo, Duterte? Cebuano. Nakatira ka ba doon? Hindi. Bakas yun lang. <laughs> May kilala ka sa dana. Wala rin. Kasi nakatira ako sa Dabaw. Doon ako lumaki. Pero ba, ang, I, I'm, kami doon sa, besides nga, we grew up in a neighborhood. Mix kami lahat. No tribe can claim dominance there. Marunong kami mag-ilog noon. I can understand Ilocano. Mga bata kami noon. Nagsasalita na kami ng Ilocano noon. But Ilonggo, baulente nga. Kaisi nga mag-learn ka sa Ilonggo. Tutuloy mo na ng accent mo na ang pabagsak. <laughs> so gano'n, no? may problema kami. But I have yet to hear itong mga politika after the filing of the certificate of candidate. I was hoping that somebody, uh, a better set of the gray matter between their ears, Natatakbo, eh wala yan. That was one idea. We were in a quandary now. Anong gawain nito? Kasi, in fairness, hindi naman ako nagano kay Jojo. I'm just quoting him. Kami sa Makati, kami sa Makati, kami ano Makati. <laughs> Yung Pilipinas, papa, no? <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I'm saying what I hear, and I am probably in all Narinig ninyo yan? Ganon talaga. Ako sa Makati, ito ginawa ko Makati. <laughs> eh, ang problema ang Makati, puro siminto. <laughs> eh, ang Mindanao, gubat, uh, kakagpay rin kami siya nga ito, bababababab. Hindi, <laughs> kapatay ng civilian na damo, ang patay nga ito ah. Ganon yan eh. Ito rin mga, si Rukas. <laughs> no, this is not the time. Out of respect to the institution. I will not. I was just quoting. Kasi, binibigyan ko kayo ng idea. Gaano kasi problema namin. At ito lang gayon mo. Rojas, I would say that he is the weakest link to governance. <laughs> he is really. He is really. We're better up. Alam mo kasi ganito yan eh. I said I've been mayor for 22 years. But my God, uh, I've always took care of my name. Kasi, abogado ako. I was a prosecutor. And added to that, I was also designated special prosecutors for the Tanud Bayan, which is the predecessor of the Ombudsman now. That was the time of Marcos. 
I was going around Mindanao prosecuting people for getting the money or into their pockets. I had con secured the conviction of four mayors, mga anim na auditors and treasurers, a mix. Kaya nung ako na mayor, na, not because uh, the opportunity, but the sabi ko, please, I, I will find myself someday facing also a prosecutor sa ombudsman. Mahirap yan. Uh, simple living. I don't go for bad things. Why? Because I never tasted it. And for the first time na lumabas ako ng country, when I was already, I was a congressman. I had completed three terms, then run for congressman because I could not run for the fourth time. And it was only that time that naka, naka, nakita ko yung America, pangit. <laughs> China, never. well, uh, ito talaga doon. Pasok ka sa, you know, this is stupid. We were going to South America. Uh, a parliamentary, interparliamentary visit. Pumunta ako doon, because ang port of, um, ang port of, uh, ano, sa ginagamit, South America, New York and Florida. Pupunta ka muna ng New York and Florida bago ka makasakay papao. Si papunta ako sa labas. I was, I was using a diplomatic passport. I was a congressman. But there were the travel authority issued by the speaker. Ano, pagdating sa Argentina, kinuha yung sulat. Hindi na wala doon sa passport. So I had to get back to America to go home to the... Long flight from South America, Derecha. We have to go to America. Alam mo itong Amerikang black immigration. Tiwawag, kalabas lang ako, tiwawag niya ako. Sabi niya na, it's your passport. Binigyan ko. Where's this document of travel? Ay ko, the, the, the Brazilian took it though. Sabi niya, you should not you. Nilikturan ako ng gago. <laughs> oh, kabobo naman itong Amerika. Ay. Ay, sabi ko, what can I do? That the, the main, I, I have to pass here because I'm going home. I'm not going to stay here. I don't not like to stay here because of you. <laughs> Where's your supervisor? I'd like to talk to your supervisor. They don't have to protect. I said, what happened to this guy? What's he bothered about authority? I am passing by, I was, nag, nag, ano ako, by uh, Philippines. Lalabas ka ng LA. Nag-layover lang ako ng six hours do. Oh my God. Pero punta ka ng China. Oh, among Asians, you're very courteous. Magbabaw ka. Itong mga puti, because, you know, if I may take a little bit of your time. America has a bruised soul. It is, it's not really wounded. America is terribly galit sila sa terrorism, which they brought it upon themselves. Tapos, they are so parang takot, basta everywhere there's a small flicker even of terrorism over the world. Ako naman, we're happy that somebody is taking care of that. But you know, sometimes, kagaya niyang posturing natin, you, you join war exercises there. Sino ang pinatapatamaan mo? Di yung China. Kaya naturally yung China, galit, nag-hard stand. Eh ako ha, we are allied with the West. I admit that. <clears throat> and the Americans, probably the Australians and Japan, want to deal with the Chinese on a round table, multilateral. China does not want it. They want bilateral. Sabi ko, we are allied with the Americans and the rest, and we'll give it time to happen. But after two, three years, if, if it is still in still waters, nothing is moving, there is no wind to sail us, I will talk to the Chinese. And my deal is that you have always been insisting on the ownership of that piece of water there. You know, that is ours. It belongs to our economic zone exclusive. Why are you building something there in our area? 
But if you just stop yakking about the ownership and we talk about trade and commerce, I will sit down with you and talk. We can have a joint exploration you know, if there is really a matter of gas or uh, oil. Sabi, sabihin ko sa kanila na, you know, we can have a joint exploration. If I cannot come up with the hardware, kasi mahirap lang kami, they will provide the warm bodies. But let us agree on a sharing. Me? I am only good if I am president for six years. I will not promise you something which I cannot accomplish. But right at the start, kung wala talaga, sabihin ko, just give us a railway in Mindanao. I have yet, I have yet a third world country rise to progress and development na walang railway. So I will ask for a railway or around Mindanao, a railway from Manila to Bicol, a railway, yung maganda, Manila to Batangas, okay na ako. Babay na kayo lahat. That's my contribution to my country. But of course, uh, we must always adapt a neutral stand. We cannot afford a war with China. It would be pure massacre. We only have five, no, two modern M50s. Dalawa. We wasted our money on that jet, jet, armed fight. Hindi natin kailangan niyan kasi to whom shall we fight with? With two jets? Arrayed against us in front of that Spratly is China with 3,000 MiG fighters. It will be a massacre. I will not put I will never agree for us to join the order. Kasi, ubos ang Pilipino. I will not sacrifice the lives of Filipinos there. Bahala kayo kung... But, waste the war outside of my country. Because if we join a venture, or an adventure, or a misadventure, the battleground would be Palawan and the rest of our islands on the western side. So, who wants war? Ang hirap-hirap ng natin eh. I want mobility. I want to improve the country. The, you know, El Nino is creeping all throughout the Republic of the Philippines. Soils are cracked. At yung mga farm implements, they waited for election time bago nila dinistribute in the provinces. When the soil is already arid and there is no moisture at all. Now, if that El Nino would last more than six months, we are in trouble. Now, it would be it behooves upon the, the president. Sana sila na lang wag ako. Uh, you know, you have to provide food that is available and food that is affordable. So, kung may pera ka naman, if the uh, economy improves, eh, wala ka namang magpakita. O may makita ka, hindi kaya ng masa, patay. And that is a serious problem again. So, yan ang problema natin. I've yet to see somebody talk about drugs. Talagang galit ako sa drugs. Forget the laws of men. Kalimutan mo muna yung revised penal code. Kalimutan mo yung mga fiscal judge. Let us go by the divine equation of justice, karma, in this planet. What gave you the right to cook shabu? Sell it to my daughter and son and destroy his life forever. Who gave you the right to destroy my daughter or son. Anong ginawa? Anong ginawa namin? Anong, anong, what are our sins? Anong astrato nun? Then doon sa San Pablo, Lucena, I was ranting against the rape of yung mga bata. You know, mga adik, the rape women, old women, grandmothers, wives, they defile the body and they just kill them. 
પૈસા આપી ગયો ના ના આપ્યો અનુ ન ગવ આવો એટલે મોતન મને રિવાઈઝ વાપસ ખાલી મોતન મે પોલીસ પતે મિલે તારે અનુ ન ગવ આવો છે બાકી ગનો ને મો આપું અન તાતા એ મે કસલ આના છે યો અંગના નઈ અનુ કી નવા ને છે યો એ સે બાકી ગનો ન ઓર હમ કે ઇન દે હંતા યો એ કોઈ ગો તો દે બેસિક ઓના ઓન મો ન યંગ પોલીસ એ પોલીસ દે તો સમય ની લાવા including pedia pedia will be disbanded if i become president it is contaminated also ganola comer but been mayor for 22 years i was the first one to point out to the lima that there is shabo being cook inside it took her 6 months to open it i was testifying in the senate and when enrique said do you know david bangaya oh, yes so we get malam ko i got it from the intelligence community because when inares ask me to help in the investigation of smuggling e kung anak ko smuggler bakit ako ibigay niya sa akin sabi niya rudi tulungan mo kami dito si presidente of course i'll do it for my country so smelling around nobody from dabao to manila new bangayan ke ma coast guard navy lahat yung uh, marina customs immigration walang alam so punta ko noon sa Aguinaldo I said I've been mayor for 20 lahat yan dumaan na ng Mindanao so give me ano sabi pa nang mo oh, sir wala yan sir oh, don't 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 <laughs> ibigay mo sa akin kay magtestify ako in the afternoon dumating yung envelope kasi eh, sabi ko kay Enrique really, yan no? Ngamnya, ete nanu nya ko. Eh anu gawin mo kung makita mo si mga yan smuggling rice. Inda ba siya? Papatayin ko. Nagri aksi dili ma. Ide ban dandan nya ko for threatening just because she was there. Alam mo sabi ko ma'am, abogado man tayo dalawa. The only entity or if, there, if at all anybody there, sama sen- senador. Sila lang ang pwedeng mag-question sa akin. It's only the Senate. Nobody else or the member. Masabi ko magbalik ka sa logbox mo. Eh kung nag-aral siya ng law sa Lyceum, di mas bright siya ngayon. Ano ang problema? Nung si Tens, ito, nung mga grandstanding, they want to you know, just shine. That is why they ride on my... Marami pang dadating. Marami pang... Ah, nanuwala ka. Pasakayin ko talaga sila. But I assure you, being a graduate of uh, Lyceum, talagang mabait ako. Now, I will end up... I'm not into the habit of saying, Butuhan ninyo ako kasi ako si Duterte. Magaling ako na abogado. Kala mo siya lang rin. Ah, ako, ganito. Ako ma... At yung pera ng tao, hindi talaga manakaw yan. Hindi manakaw yan kasi nabulos ako yan dito. Ako ang bahala. You know, I'll end up by saying, can Binay, well, Binay can talk about drugs, criminality, but I look you into your eyes at siya mo sa akin ang totoo. Can he talk about corruption? A e president is a. How will he convince people to go straight so that money will not be lost? Can I talk about corruption? Ito si Mar. Na. Na lang mo na yan. Ay, nagdawad ko pa. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the contrast. Pero ayaw ko mag-anong. I will not. I have to go kasi baka mamura ko pa yung mura na lang. Yeah, I said out of indifference to a learning institution which really I love. Uh, and I'd like to thank the family of the Laurels for, you know, being parang close na rin ako. And I would like to see uh, another speaker, Jose B. Laurel, whoever dyan sa ex kanila. Alam mo ganito yan. Mahirap lang kami. I have to tell you this. To show how, how much my gratitude is to the family. 
Noon, pag mag, mag ano ka ng ice plant, pati yung electric, ice public utilities, yung water, you have to get a congressional franchise. Ang tatay ko, so of course, uh, I wanted to also provide a yung out of, siguro, to awa na, you know, naghanap siya ng negosyo, ice plant. But you have to give to get the permit. So my father explored the possibility of, naka-usap niya si Speaker Loren. Tapos, uh, balik-balik siya dito, yung nag-grant na ang franchise. Pumunta ang tatay ko sa opisina niya, dyan sa Congress noon. At sabi niya, Mr. Speaker, maraming salamat po. Ha? So tinapik niya ang ano, tatay ko. Sabi niya, just add it to our friendship. Yun ang sagot ni Speaker. At no, maliit pa ako. Narinig ko yung ano. So, uh, I am, nag-plagiarize ako. Eh. So ngayon ako sa, ah, dagdag po yan sa pagkakaibigan natin. That, uh, hindi yan akin, kapeing lang yan. Sanay ako magkape since kindergarten. <laughs> so, yun ang, that has kept me sa, with, within the loving reigns of uh, the laurels. I'd like to thank you, the faculty, school, the graduate to whom this moment rightfully belongs. Uh, it's going to be a hard night. You know, the only reason that, the only thing that can we really do is for you to strive so that we can raise people to the middle class. Alam mo, ang middle class in a society ngayon, the fulcrum, yung dito, is really the middle class all around the world. But dito ngayon sa Philippines, ang fulcrum, ang gobyerno. So, that's why politics is so messy. But uh, by the grace of God, lalo na kayo, kayo, di yung mga graduate ng Lyceum, uh, take care of the younger generation. Ako, I'm doing my part. Talagang sinisira nila. Andito sa Manila, no, kidnapin yung mga Chinese, kunan ng ransom, pagkatapos wala na pala, patay na. Those are the things that I cannot, di ko talaga, mabubuwang ako. Just like yung sa Davao incident, nakita ko yung, yung patay, nagmura ako, which I, I used a slang, a slang, hindi idiom, slang talaga yan. Mabuti pa itong ito. Hindi na hindi na nagbayad, siya pang unang kumain. Ganun na, pagka ano. Ito mabuti pa ito, kapangit-pangit, ang ganda-ganda ng asawa niya. It's a chocolate, it's a chocolate. Ang putang ina to. That was it. Hindi, ganun yan. I was using that word. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Ang ginamit ko, hindi na mga to. Sino pa nung una, imbis yung mayor. That was it. I said it. I was not joking. I was narrating exactly the words I uttered. So, why am I now? Well, anyway. But, uh, ako, or the, or hindi ako, hindi ako suma kum laude, hindi ako kum laude, o magna kum laude, hindi, hindi ako honor student, tignan mo yung grade ko sa 78, kay, kay, may professor kami noon si, Rosalinda Terona. She was teaching us geopolitics. Akala kasi ng mga buang kalaban ko. You know, I, sabihin ko, galing ako ulit siyo. Kumuha ako ng foreign service, pati AB ako doon, political science. Mahusay ang natutunan ko dito sa 2H. Huwag ninyo akong okay, maglaban sila. Akala kasi na probidyano ako na. Yan kaya talaga mo kasi hindi na alam siguro from where of I stand. Hindi mo ako maluko sa buhay. Ikaw ang laruan ko doon sa... Pero ngayong second debate, magpatalo na lang ako. Sabi ko, I, I, I cannot understand. Kasi pinaris ako, po Duterte, tapos uh, Santiago Duterte. Nilayo ako doon sa dalawang ugok. <laughs> Eh, kung kasama ko mga babae, ako ang magtanong. I'd rather not. Sabihin ko lang. Pero, 
Will it be proper? I don't know. It would not be, but I, I related to them. Yung kami ni po na to. Ah, may gusto akong sabihin, pero I, it, it would leave a bad taste in the mouth, maybe. But, you know. Uh, so, I end up with, uh, with a note uh, on a, of uh, optimism that I would live long enough to be the graduate speaker in 1990. I'm now, uh, no, 1990, 2090 rather. I'm now 71. Siguro may mga ilang taon pa. Paugod-ugod na, but I can still give you some vignettes in life that would be helpful to you. Maraming salamat po. Graduates, please be seated. Once again, let us give our uh, commencement.